All right, I am back with another video. This one will be on uh, this uh, female, and uh, the interesting thing about her is I had put her together with a male uh, black lace snakeskin uh, back in June, I think, June or July. I think it was late June. And uh, the uh, black lace snakeskin male I had culled because he had a nice pattern but uh, an eye spot in the uh, middle of the snakeskin pattern right in the center of the body it was kind of cool I didn't want to destroy him or feed him to anything and I wanted to try an experiment of going uh, from the black lace snakeskin male back to a black Moscow female and see what would happen with the fry now what actually ended up happening was the male died after the first batch was born which was uh, I think the first batch I have noted down that it was uh, back in September 2019. So a brief history on uh, things as I digress already. The uh, Every uh, guppy in this video, except, except for this female, uh, was uh, fathered by a dead male. Now not a male that was uh, dead in fathering them. He uh, fathered them all before uh, passing away. Apparently female guppies can store uh, sperm as well as some other species, uh, turtles, ants, some other things, uh, to produce fry later on. Uh, really not sure how many months but it is documented that it can be stored in a reproductive uh, tract for up to six months and you can find articles on Academia, Science Daily, even the Smithsonian Magazine. And uh, now I can vouch for uh, going on four months with this female because uh, she was a, a virgin female before I put the male in and I put them in I think together somewhere around late June as I think I already said. And I finally got the first drop of fry from them while the father was still alive back in uh, September. And uh, I won't include those fish in this uh, video since, as I said in the title, all the fish in this video were fathered by the dead male. So uh, the female stored the sperm and then I got the first drop of fry after the male had passed away in October and uh, that is going to be these see if I can get these guys on here uh, this is some more thin leaf water sprite now every uh, fish in this drop is a black eyed fish and you can see the the males have uh, a similar issue with the uh, snakeskin pattern in the body, meaning really there isn't one. It's just like a black, uh, almost like a skeleton key kind of looking shape on the body. Uh, sorry about the dirt, they like to create dirt. But there you can see it pretty good on that male and that male and all the females uh, in front of them. But uh, there's somewhat of a, a variegated pattern in the tail, but they all have a uh, Instead of a snakeskin pattern on the body, like uh, this black, uh, solid black. So there is one in here that has no uh, snakeskin pattern whatsoever. That's uh, him right behind the plant. Very kind of him to go behind the plant, so I can't see him while I'm talking about him. There we go, almost. Ah, son of a gun. There we go. And he hides again. Alright, I'm going to yank this plant out of here in a couple of minutes. Well, talk about not being able to prove a point, and he's gone. So anyway, these are the males from that first drop. And the interesting thing is not a single one of these is anything but a black-eyed uh, fish. And uh, I mention that because uh, there is uh, albinism in the uh, apparently in the black Moscow line. And uh, since I used that to create the black lake snakeskins initially, it would uh, make sense that uh, somewhat of a distant uh, albinism gene in these things and I'll get to that with the next uh, group of fish which will be the batch that was born in October 
and uh, I'll follow up with that in a moment and uh, be right back. All right, and this uh, dead guppy male that fathered all these uh, fish is now actually a posthumous uh, grandpa because if you can see there's a baby right in there so one of these females is having some fry and just on cue there's the male with no snakeskin pattern whatsoever which is very interesting so I'm leaving that in here uh, sorry about the dirt in the tank uh, just probably my luck uh, this was a clean tank right before I put all the fish in but there you can see there's no pattern whatsoever and uh, it's just an interesting thing it's, it's not really a particular strain or anything it's like a navy blue or black fish with a the color going three quarters halfway to three quarters up the body a couple of spots or dashes of magenta and it's just very interesting so since I already know from other crosses that the non-patterned males also carry the snakeskin gene I'm leaving him in there just to see what ends up happening so I will now get back to what I said which was the uh, batch born in October after the another well, probably about two months after the male was dead so that will be the second drop from the female uh, after the father of all these fish had passed away. I did not put another male in with that female and uh, uh, to this day she's still in a tank by herself except right now she's in with one of the fry that uh, she just had a, uh, about a month ago. Alright, so this was the uh, drop about two months after the male had passed away and there are uh, 30 total fish in here 22 have black eyes, 8 have uh, albino, uh, bright red eyes. Uh, that's about a 25, 26 percentage of the batch. Uh, it doesn't include if any might have gotten eaten or died. I really don't know, but 25 percent sounds like a pretty good number. But it is interesting that all of a sudden the albinos came out of this, and quite a nice percentage of them after the male was already dead two months. So something to do with her storing the sperm from the male and who knows maybe uh, uh, the, yeah, maybe the sperm was diluted somewhat and uh, we ended up with albinos because it's very far in the background of the black moscals which is also in the background of the uh, black lay snakeskins. So trying to get uh, close to one of the males the albino ones uh, so you can see the pattern is uh, starting snakeskin pattern is starting but it's a light blue it probably didn't help that I used a blue background but I needed that for the blackfish so you can see the uh, the male and the uh, with the black eyes are developing the same as the prior generation where there's like a uh, just half the body I guess the middle third of the body halfway up to the tail is got a solid black pattern and uh, I will end up pulling some of the albinos out I'll take uh, Renee's advice and put in a male albino snakeskin with two of the albino females and probably two of the black eyed uh, females just in case and see what happens so the, they're all developing really well uh, the uh, couple of females I did notice had uh, extended uh, fins. I don't know if they're going to end up being like a swallow tail type or a swallow type. But the, uh, the anal fin and the dorsal fin were getting a little bit longer. But we'll see. They're very young. These fish are only three months old. And uh, the color started developing, I guess, last month. And uh, see if I can isolate one of these males. Yeah, I don't know. They don't seem to like the camera. There's a couple of them in the back. And I can't get this to focus on it. Alright. Too much light. Let me try and move to the side. See if we can get them that way. Alright. And the, the viewfinder, I'm not noticing uh, the pattern, but it may show up better on the actual video. Sometimes the uh, what I get to see as I'm filming it doesn't match uh, the video when uh, it's posted. So uh, we'll see. But anyhow, that's uh, one of the albino ones. 
and uh, hopefully they will be fertile and I'm not going to put them all in with uh, females just I think I have three albino snakeskin males I think I'm going to put uh, two of them in and leave one with uh, the rest of the batch so we'll see but anyway this is uh, batch number four which was very small it was uh, three or four fish and uh, the three black eyed ones died and the one uh, albino lived it's about uh, almost a month old and a female is pretty full again so not going to be long before she has another drop of fry once that front of the body starts to square off and uh, she'll get a little bit dilated and uh, then we'll see some more fry so I know I'll get at least one more drop out of her probably in about two weeks uh, judging from when this last uh, small batch was had and he's right in front of me somewhere there we go so uh, something to keep an eye on but I can definitely vouch for uh, at this point uh, she's stored the sperm for four drops now which would be four months and that's pretty interesting I don't know if I'll get the full six that uh, I've read about but we'll see and uh, see if I can get a better view of this guy so far so good maybe I'll turn to the side and you can see the gonopodium is just starting to develop and the coloration is starting so I'm looking forward to seeing how these grow out they should be very interesting and uh, this is a very unusual situation uh, going into a fourth drop after the the father of all the fish had uh, passed away so uh, it's obviously a very healthy female this one and uh, you know she should uh, hang in there for a little while longer each bash that they have can take a pretty large uh, toll on the body sometimes as they get older they develop like a hunched uh, back and yeah, we'll see but by that point I'll be on to using these fish as their replacements so I appreciate you watching and uh, I'll be back with another video in a few days uh, not sure where it's gonna be on yet but it'll be on something so thanks for watching